I'm going to show you how to make a hand-built teapot, something like this today, that's asymmetrical and has a lot of texture on it. So to begin with, I'm going to show you how to stretch out the slab. So here's a slab that I made with a lot of texture on it, and I'm going to show you how to stretch it right over here on the floor. So you want to find a piece of floor that's a little bit dirty. If it's really clean, you won't be able to stretch really well, so you take the slab of clay and stretch it on the floor. So that you end up with a really nice looking stretched texture. I'm going to build this one over a tube. So here's a couple pieces of clay that I've already stretched and I applied texture to these and then let them set up a little while because they were really really soft when I first made them. So I'm just positioning it right now around the slab, I mean around the tube, to see about how much I'm going to overlap so I know how much to score. So scoring in here. So they're still, they're not really leather hard slabs, they're a little bit soft. And when you build using these slabs that are still soft, they're not really plastic, but they're pretty soft, you're going to end up with a very organic teapot. So that one I showed you is very soft looking. Add a little bit of watery slip. Score again. And then I'm going to score the sides of this piece. One thing about these teapots is they end up looking like they were made really, really quickly. And it's not really the case because you do need to go back and reinforce the seams and um, really score deeply on the, the slab so that they stay together. So even though in this video it will appear like I'm putting this together really quickly, I do go back and reinforce and make sure that um, they're drying slowly so that they don't crack. Press the seams together. Pressing the seams together. Score this little part right here. Score right here. Now I want to put the base on it. So I've prepared a slab for the base. And a lot of times I put the slab texture up because I'll just retain this whole slab as part of the teapot um, so it will extend past the base of the teapot. like that. I'm going to mark very lightly where this is going to sit on the base so I know where to score it. And I'm picking it, when I pick this up I'm using that tube as a support for this. Score in those areas where you indicated with your tool.
and some watery slip. And then score the base of this. Of course, when you're working, you can face this towards yourself so you can actually see what you're doing. And then place it on the base. And now is a good time to put in all the re reinforcements in the base of your teapot. So I'm using really wet clay to roll out. and then support all my seams with this wet clay. And as I'm pressing the clay on the inside, I'm supporting it from the outside. And use a wood knife to go back in and smooth out those seams. And then I need a coil for the base of it and for the seam opposite, the one that I just joined. And this is really, really wet clay. As a matter of fact, this was my, my throwing rejects from um, my bloopers video that I just did. So it's really wet. It was an unintentional bloopers video. And then you want to make one more coil to go up the side seam. And get those well joined into those seams before we go on to the next part because the next part might be a little more difficult to get your hand back down in it after I put the lid, start the, um, the area that I'm going to put the lid on. Okay, so for the top part here, I want to bring it in a little bit so I can put my lid on top. And this isn't necessarily, people are always asking me, are these functional teapots? That is not my main concern when I'm making teapots, teapots of this type that are very organic. However, I do make all my teapots so that they can be used to pour from. So they are watertight and you can pour from them. Whether you would want to or not, that's a different story. So I'm just kind of sizing up what I want to do here for the top part. I'll stick it together and then I'll go back and score and slip once I see that I have the parts ready that I'd like to put on here. So I think I'll go with something like that for the top of the teapot. So now it's very important to go back and score everything and put it together well. And it may change a little bit when I put it back together, but at least I know that I have enough clay to go around the top of this and score the top as well. I have a variety of scoring tools that I use when I'm hand building, you've probably noticed that I switch back and forth from this rib that has a serrated edge and the brush that I use that also has a serrated edge. There we go, something like that. A little bit of slip in there. It's very wet in that area right now, so I don't want to do too much shaping on it right now. What I'm going to do is let it dry up a little bit, and then I'll go back in and put a reinforcement coil in that area. 